Let's go over what's new in Virilize Log Insight 8.8, and we'll start with our agenda. So our big feature for this release is we have direct forwarding to Log Insight Cloud now. Um, it's API based with an API key, no more proxy agent needed. If we're upset about using proxy agents or any kind of special agent, uh, no need anymore if you have Log Insight on-prem. All you have to do is fill in the API section, which I'll show you in the demo, and we have a screenshot of, and we can forward straight to Log Insight Cloud with no need for any kind of proxy. And then we have um, some new webhook templates for VRO. So we can now send web, webhooks to Virilize Orchestrator for actioning. So if an alert or an event comes up that's important and, and we want to action on it, we can send that alert to VRO. And then once VRO ingests that with the webhook, you can action on it, whether that's to um, create a new virtual machine or to change resources, whatever, whatever Vero can do, uh, Log Insight can integrate it with it now and action based on that webhook. We have a new feature for alert history. When an alert has been triggered, you will now see an alert history in that alert. So when you press the button, you'll get uh, a quick overview of when it triggered and some information. And now to, to match some of our other products, we have left panel navigation, Previous Log Insight Cloud was top and left. Now it's just left, matches Log Insight Cloud a little more in our other SaaS products. And then a cool other feature is we can query specific index in, indexes in Log Insight now. So that'll cut down on the query time and I will show that um, as well. So let's start with proxy list forwarding. No need to deploy a VRLIC proxy anymore if Log Insight on-prem is deployed. So the events will forward straight from on-prem to cloud directly with the API. So, you know, this is useful for customers that have Log Insight on-prem, so they don't have to worry about having an agent anymore. Um, the agent is still an option for customers that don't use Log Insight on-prem or for small footprint data centers. So customers might use Log Insight on-prem, but not, might not want to deploy it in every one of their data centers because it is a bigger footprint than the proxy. So they still have the option to deploy the proxy in that case. Or if we have a customer that's just using the SaaS version of Log Insight Cloud, they still have the option to deploy the proxy instead of you know, just deploying Log Insight on-prem. But for customers that leverage both, since they're better together, they can forward straight from on-prem to uh, Log Insight with no proxy. So all you have to do is generate an API key in Log Insight Cloud, and then give that API key into the log forwarding section of Log Insight on-prem, which I'll show you. And then it will immediately start authenticating and sending events. You can send all events, or you can just send certain events based on a filter. Uh, it's the same configuration as any third-party logging solution currently. So if you're sending events to something like Splunk Cloud or Splunk, it's the same thing, except it's for Log Insight Cloud. You know, we we have the choice to use Log Insight on-prem as a as a proxy. So you don't have to ingest your events into Log Insight on-prem if the you know if there's no need for it. You can go straight from uh, your your endpoint to Log Insight Cloud using Log Insight on-prem as kind of a, um, a proxy host without ingestion. So if there are certain events that a user would want to send straight to the cloud without ingesting on-prem, they can do that. And then it'll just forward straight through and go to the cloud. And then if there are other events they want to keep on-prem, they can do that as well, all based on you know, how they set up their, their filters and how they set up their tagging. So basically the cloud forwarding screen looks like this. It's very basic. You just have to give your new channel a name. So we call it VRLI Cloud Ops instance. The cloud URL is already filled in for you since it's Log Insight Cloud. All you have to do is generate a, a cloud key from Log Insight Cloud, tag it if you want. You can choose to forward all your events, or you can add a filter to just choose certain host names or certain applications. And then under the advanced settings, we can choose whether we want to use this as a relay or not a relay. So obviously, if you turn relay on, It'll act as a relay and it won't store an index, the events that we specify for this forwarding, or if you leave relay off, it will ingest those events, put them in the database, then it will forward them onto Log Insight Cloud. So we give, we give customers that option if, if they're looking for ways to kind of separate their logs into cloud and on-prem, we can do that with this, um, this, new, this new option for cloud forwarding. Now we have our Realize Orchestrator webhook template. So um, we have a special endpoint. Uh, it's specific for VRO, it's not generic. So the payload will be formatted for VRO's orchestrator. So VRO can in ingest it and understand it. 
You just have to give the webhook URL for VRO, um, set the content type, and then we have the payload already set. Um, you can choose from our parameters or you can create your own kind of specific payload based on what you're looking to do. So once this payload fires off into VRO, it can be ingested by VRO and it can fire off a certain action or event to do, uh, you know, uh, like I said, a virtual machine creation uh, to modify maybe something in NSX or to modify something. Anything VRO can do can be called. Um, we can have um, trigger using this Virilize Orchestrator uh, webhook and ingested. Then a few other enhancements we have, streamlined UI. Uh, the old UI for login site 8.6 and uh, uh, before is basically, you know, dashboard on the top, or I'm sorry, um, navigation on the top, navigation on the left. Now we have a navigation pane all on the left. So once you choose a certain pane tab here, uh, you will be brought to a, a, a stacked tab on the uh, on the right side where you can choose what you where you want to go. And we have our alert history. So every time an alert goes off, um, the alert history will be kept with that alert. So if we go into the alert sections and we expand the alert history, we can see how many times the alert had fired off in that time period. And we can see what the alert actually was. So you can see here, deletes by administrator. We wanna know whenever, whenever an administrator in vCenter is deleting something. Um, we can see that alert fired off at this time and it fired off twice in that time. And it looks like you know we were deleting some, some um, files from our NFS data store. So we'll know exactly what the event is. And then we can go back into our interactive analysis and our log explorer, and we can go look to see what happened during that time. And then searching based on index. This saves a lot of time. So if you have a certain index uh, with certain events, so right here, I have an index called admin logins. Um, if you know you're looking for admin logins, you can save a lot of time by querying that index specifically with login site 88 instead of just querying all of the indexes or the general index. So that will cut down on your query times, that will cut down on the number of events that come up and just save you overall operational time. So, you know, the haystack got a little smaller to find that needle and it'll also use less resources since it's only querying a subset of events. So the queries will come back quicker and you can do more extracted fields and, and other things like that since you're saving on um, CPU power. As far as content packs, uh, we have some bug fixes for our vSphere and vSAN content packs. We have a new content pack, which is um, we have a new VRO 8.01. So we want to support VRO 8.0 coming going forward. So this content pack will, will support that. We have a, a new TKGI 1.0 content pack. There's been a lot of requests for that. And then another big one is Jenkins. So if we want to shift closer to DevOps, Jenkins is a uh, big DevOps tool, very important for testing workloads. So we had a Jenkins content pack in LogInsight Cloud. Now we have one matching in Login Insight on-prem to use. And then some other updates, we've updated the NSXT content pack with some bug fixes. The ALB, uh, vCloud direct Director uh, ha had an older content pack, it's been updated. And then we've updated the EMC VMAX and PowerMax content packs as well. And one thing I wanted to point out that uh, became a major issue uh, with a lot of vRealize deployments that they've resolved is that lots of vRealize login site instances that were using NFS storage, if that NFS storage became full or unavailable, the login site instance would freeze and stop ingesting events. So that became a major issue with a lot of customers. So in 8.8, .8, now when the NFS archive location becomes full or unavailable, login site will no longer continue to fill up the buckets in the archive state and not clean it up, which caused login site to kind of crash and pause and which would cause the login site actual storage, you know, the, the live storage to fill up and then that would break login site. Now we have a system where if the, if the NFS bucket fills up, we will do a drop and login site will keep functioning without uh, crashing. Same as if you don't have NFS storage attached to login site, it'll do, it will do a um, first in, first out uh, it should do the same thing now to avoid login site from crashing and having to be rebooted and calling support and a lot of other things. There are a lot of customers that use NFS archiving, so this will be a big operational you know, headache that's that's relieved for them uh, when it comes comes to this this fix. And now I'm going to show some quick demos of some of the new features we have. So one of the things I wanted to show is our index searching. 
So normally when you would do a search for an event in Log Insight, you would have to search for you know every single bucket and every single um, index, and that could cause a lot of you know time to 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 value, and that can cause um like you saw when we had to query all those events, it took a little while for everything to come up. Now we have this great new um, field called underscore index. So if you just want to look for everything in an index, I have an index here called NSX DFW accept. So if I search here, this is going to search for all of our DFW accept rules. So it only looks in that index space for those specific rules. So now you can see these are only uh, distributed firewall rules that were accepted. So now if we're doing some troubleshooting, the querying will work a lot faster and you can move a lot smoother. So if we're looking for you know, a certain event from a certain IP address, we can do this source. You can grab that. And so we're looking for anything that came out of here. And then we can start troubleshooting based on that IP address from the events in that index. And as you can see, the, the query took less than a few, less than a second. Uh, if we had to query everything, especially if you have a larger log insight instance with you know terabytes of, of data, it could take a long time to do troubleshooting. It could cost a lot of valuable resources. So we've eliminated that with the searching of indexes. So as long as you as long as your indexes are uh, separated out properly, it should make looking for root cause analysis and doing operational or any kind of troubleshoot, troubleshooting much easier and much quicker. And then the other thing I wanted to show off is our, we have a new section called cloud forwarding. So all you have to do is add a new channel. So we just have to give it a name and we have this API section in log inside cloud where we generate API keys. We give it a new key. We can't have spaces. And now when we create this new API key, we just have to copy this key, bring it back here, paste it. We can tag with whatever we want. And then we can even add a filter. It defaults by forwarding all events, but if we really want to add certain um, filter based on criteria, we can add anything we want. So we can add you know, app uh, matches pseudo. We can add app matches, we'll do uh, something smaller. So code stream, we can run an explore really quick to make sure that we have the proper events in the explorer page. And then in the advanced settings, we can set it to really or really not, depending on if we want to keep our logs and log insight on-prem as well as log inside cloud. And once we are done, we can save this and, sorry, copy the URL. And once we're done, we can save this and it will start forwarding events to our Log Insight Cloud instance without any proxy needed. I'm not gonna save this because I have the proxy running, so I don't wanna double forward events. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty simple to set up, much more simple than deploying an OVA, getting an IP address, um, you know, looking for the resources on your ESX hosts. All you have to do is kind of set up this new channel, go into your Log Insight Cloud, give it a key, and you are done with forwarding in that manner.